Y'all, it's our birthday week. Burr, 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 burr. Okay, turn up. I'm so excited. God Goals and Girl Talk is two years old, y'all. I got a toddler, okay? A whole toddler. This is so impressive to me. I am so grateful for each and every one of you, um, every listener, every inbox, every review, the the testimonies that I get from this show really encourage me. Oftentimes, um, leaders and people who show up in personalities, especially when we're doing things for God, are often going through hell behind the scenes that nobody knows about. And so the testimonies have come right on time. Um, so I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I love this show. I love God. Like I love the fact that he has even saw me fit to be able to... Um, grow this thing and to be a steward over this platform. And I'm just so excited and so fired up. Please let the fact that we are 24 months in, okay? Um, God Goes and Girl Talk was born December 31st, 2019. And Friday is our birthday, okay? It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Um, I am so, so, so excited to see where God continues to take our community, um, to see the lives that are transformed through the revelation that God gives me and allows me to speak on this platform. I just would love for each of y'all to screenshot or to um, tag me in any kind of God goes and girl talk revelation, what you love about the show. If you could do anything for me this week, it would be that because y'all, I just love it. I love when people, I'm like, yes, girl, I do be on there clowning. Yes. Um, I absolutely love y'all's feedback um, or drop a review. Make sure you subscribe, share it with a friend. I really am asking God to increase our territory. And I'm asking y'all to really partner with me in that um, because if it's blessed you, it could bless somebody else. And so I just ask that y'all share the show. You subscribe, you like, you subscribe to our YouTube. Um, I'm going to continue to show up in different ways. Um, and just continue to seek God fervently for um, things that are going to be relevant, that can apply and that can transform and change lives. The minute that I am no longer being transformative, the minute that I am no longer hearing God is the day that the show will end. And so um, because I'm so committed to the authenticity of this platform and to God being present here, I'm not going to just do this. This is not just a check for me. Um, there are def- definitely business, you know, we have to be saved and strategic. Okay. Should have got the bundle, honey. Um, we have to be saved and strategic. And so there are ways and things and strategies that God has given me to increase the outreach, but never ever misconstrue that, um, or misconstrue us having different options and different ways to, um, market and all of that as the quality of the show changing. Cause it will never, okay. I don't want no smoke with the Lord. So that never is going to change. And the minute that I feel like I'm not getting on here and I'm not being true to God's word, the minute that I feel like God is not, um, called me to the space or the minute that God says, Hey girl, wrap it up B it's the last show. Okay. (laughs) Um, when he says that, then that will be it. But I am grateful for this show. I am just in awe of what God can do. And, um, this really is a great segue into this week's episode of what to do when you're feeling stagnant in your walk with God. So this was our third most played episode. And um, as we end out this year, I encourage each of you, um, if you are feeling stagnant in your walk with God, that you really commit to the next 365 being different. I promise you, girl, give God 90 days. Okay. You he can do it in one day, but consistently commit yourself to God for 90 days. I promise you, your life will never be the same again. Okay. For all my wrestling fans, that was my Chris Jericho accent. Um, I promise you that it will never be the same. Um, I said yes, um, December 31st, 2019. And I have left my job this year. I'm in ministry, like kind of full time, Like, yo, it's wild over here. Like I'm still trying to put together the pieces. And so the way that God moves, um, to those who are sensitive to him, 
Um, it really is powerful. And this is a part of your purpose is staying in a renewed and a, reflect, a refreshed relationship. I've been married for 10 years, um, been with my husband for 13 and it gets, it can feel stagnant. And so it's important um, because we are the bride of the church. We are God's bride that we're making sure that we are keeping our relationship relevant, keeping it fresh. And we're not allowing the enemy to come in and try to separate us from God for any reason or any person perceived reason. And so I pray that this episode continues to bless you. Happy new year. I love y'all. We coming with that straight fire next week. Prepare yourselves. Okay. Govern yourselves accordingly. I love y'all. God bless y'all. Let's get into the episode. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the God Goals and Girl Talk podcast, where we discuss life, love, and the pursuit of of Christ. I'm so excited about today's episode, which is entitled, There's Levels to This, How to Move Deeper with God. And this is really inspired by um, us in the producer society studying uh, about God stretching us. So we're in the middle of a Bible study called Lord Stretch Us. If you're not a part of the producer society, so you missing out. Anyway, um, we have been or kind of started this deep dive into what it means to allow God to increase our capacity. A lot of us are asking God for major things and not realizing that we don't have the capacity to, to hold what God is calling us to at our current level, right? So we have to grow deeper in our relationship with Christ. We have to really allow him um, to have his way in our life to mold us and make us so that way we can get to the next level and be able to sustain, right? A lot of us, don't like the way that it feels um, when we are being stretched. It looks like warfare. It looks like pain. It looks like um, it's uncomfortable, right? I used to dance. So, you know, if you get out here and you try to dance without proper stretching, you are risking injury. And so a lot of us are out here risking spiritual injury, trying to go ahead of God and helping him, quote unquote, with um, him fulfilling the promises on our life. And we're hurting ourselves spiritually because we lack the maturity and we lack the tools and the growth necessary to really, um, sustain everything that he's called us to, right? Y'all know I love to talk about the story of Jesus um, being at the temple at the age of 12. And then he, it, he he was not in season, right? He was all man and all God. But in that moment, he was not yet ready to go out and do things at the full capacity. There was still a level of stretching that needed to be done behind the scenes. The scripture says in Luke 2, 51 and 52, that he continued to grow in wisdom and in favor with both man and God. And so it's important the work that we do behind the scenes as we allow God to um, to use us, to stretch us, and to really have his way in our life. And so today we're going to talk about the three levels um, that you have to really go through. And these aren't things that always have to happen in succession. The first, the first point is salvation that does have to happen first but the last two points this it's a cycle right this isn't something that happens one good time and could um and then you never do it again and um as we continue it'll make more sense but the first level to your relationship with god is salvation. Salvation is the act of saving preservation deliverance from destruction danger or great calamity It also means to seal, to set a seal upon, right? It's a stamp of security or preservation by implementation. It's um, to keep secret. Um, It's the sealing of an outward badge. And so when we say, God, I'm going to allow you to lord over my life, when you do do what we call your ABCs, that you admit that you need a a savior, that you, um, you believe, and then you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, right? When you do those things, steps. And if you haven't child, pause for the calls right now. Okay. And this is the time for you to, uh, to truly admit that you need a savior, believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross, rose on the third day for your sins and mine. Okay. And then confess with your mouth, God, I'm going to allow you to Lord over my life because it's not just enough for you to say, Oh, I believe right? Your life has to look like it. The scriptures tell us even the demons believe in God. Even the demons knew that the sons of Sceva, they said, they said, Paul, I know Jesus. I know who are y'all. 
And the, when the son to Sceva tried to cast that demon out, right? So it's not enough for you just to know, oh, I know that there's a God. No. Are you allowing God to lord over your life? That's what the salvation looks like. That That's the major key alert. It's not enough for you to get up and get rededicated because you done backslid 1,800 times. If that is what's happening, okay? We all sin daily, but the it, it, there should be some growth, some progression, right? It's never about perfection, but it's about progression in the things of God. And so if you are not... Um, changing if your language isn't changing if your um if your habits aren't changing then that's a clear indicator that you have not fully surrendered your heart to God if you were in the same place where you were six months ago when you got saved you have not fully submitted yourself to God and I don't mean there physically I mean that child you still cussing you still feel comfortable talking to every um every man that, that pull up into your dms you still going out to the club you cannot live both ways and when we talk about salvation it's great that you get up and here I am to worship. That's great when the song is playing and all of that. But what happens when you leave? Are you truly allowing God to have full reign over your life? Are you allowing him to really um, to really change the way that you think, to renew and transform your mind? Romans 6 and 6 tells us that we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin may lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. When you um, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you go to the level of salvation, you are no longer a slave to the things that once kept you in bondage, cussing, sex, um, homosexuality, uh, fornication, um, drugs. You are no longer a slave to that. That doesn't mean that it's not available. That doesn't mean that the opportunity won't present itself. It means that you now be, have the Holy Spirit who resides on the inside of you. And because he resides on the inside of you, you have the power to overcome. You have the power to say, you know what? Yes, that is available. Yeah, I still, I may still like the way that that man looked, child, but I got to cut him off. Hmm. I got to cut him off. It does not mean that it's not available to you, but you don't allow yourself access to that thing, access to that sin. We're not going out. I'm not going to go to the bar as an alcoholic and just say, I'm going to have a water. We're not going to tempt ourselves like that because we no longer have to be a slave to sin because we have fully submitted our lives to Christ. So the first level of your relationship with God is salvation. And that, again, comes from those ABCs. Admit that you need a savior. Believe that Jesus died on the cross and confess with your mouth and then allow God. I, I like to say D, do the work. Allow God to um, to really lord over your life. Remove the things that he tells you to remove. You have to really have a submitted heart and be so radical. And it really does take that much. Because some people are like, do it take all that? Yes, sis. The devil is after your whole soul. Yes, it takes that much. Change your number, block people, create a whole new Instagram, Facebook, or just get off of Instagram and Facebook. Whatever God is telling you to do in that season, after you really submit yourself to him and you receive salvation, you need to do it because you can't move on and you can't get deeper in your walk with Christ if you do not fully take salvation seriously. You're going to be stagnant in your walk. You're going to feel like nothing has changed. And I'm telling you from experience that once you accept Christ as your savior, everything changes. And so if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling stuck in your walk with Christ, let's go all the way back to salvation. And maybe you need to rededicate your life to Christ fully. Maybe you really need to say, okay, God, I, I admit that I need a savior. I believe that your son died. I confess with my mouth and I'm also going to do the work because the work is required. So if you are feeling stuck in your relationship, let's first check our salvation and make sure because honey, there's levels to this. This episode of the God Goals and Girl Talk podcast is brought to you by the Producer Society. The Producer Society is an online membership group for women looking to draw closer to God, to develop godly community, and to produce everything that God has called her to. 
Members of the Producer Society receive early access to the God Goals and Girl Talk podcast episodes, monthly Bible studies, exclusive online events, and so much more. If you are ready to get connected with other women who are chasing after God and wanting to produce His purpose in their lives, then this community is for you. Visit www.producersociety.com to start your free 30-day trial today. Now let's get back to the show. So now that you have given your life to Christ fully, truly, the next part of the process, and this goes along with doing the work, the next part of the relationship is sanctification. Second Corinthians 7 and 1 says, therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God, or uh, yet perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. So when we talk about sanctification, sanctification means to be made holy. Other words that mean the same thing, such as consecration, to be set apart. Your life should be set apart because you are a child of God. This does not mean that can't nobody talk to you, as my grandma would say, you so um, you so spiritually sound that you're no earthly good. That's not that. Right. But there's uh, people should be able to tell something different about you because of the God that you serve, because of the way that you live your life, because you are starting to change, because you're a new creature in Christ. Right. This should your life should not look the same. And this sanctification process is a lot of work, child pruning. OK, there's attacks. The devil, once you go from the reserves to active duty in the army of God, there's going to be attacks. It's going to seem like all hell has broken loose in your life because you and all you did was decide that you was going to live for Jesus. But that's how you know you're on the right path. OK, most times some of it is like, OK, you need to cut this off or do some pruning. But when the enemy gets big mad and you feel like all of this stuff starts happening to you, that means you're on the right path. That means that you have stood, stood 10 toes down and said, you know what? I'm no longer going to be a slave to sin. You know what? S- Satan, I'm no longer going to serve you because if you're not serving God. You serving the devil. I don't know who needed to know that. Whether you think you are or not. Lukewarm, kind of warm, child, if you are not fully on fire for God and serving him with everything that you have in your heart, mind, and soul, you are serving the devil. Okay? So sanctification has to take place because as God continues to sanctify you, he's going to continue to call you. As God continues to sanctify you, your attitude will change. Your hunger will change. You'll be able to um, to resist the temptations easier because you are now walking in who God has called you to be. The song says, I want to be tried by fire and purified. That sounds great when we sing it. But when you really consider, <laughs> when you really consider Sticking something in the fire so all of the imperfections can be burnt off. It's it's painful. It's hard. There's a struggle that happens between your flesh and your spirit. But you have to really make sure that you are reading the word of God, that you're in godly community, that you're in a Bible teaching church, and that you're continuing to be obedient when you hear God say, turn off social media, turn it off immediately. When he says, stop talking to this person, cut that relationship immediately. Too many times we want to have full dialogue with God. But sometimes like a parent, he said, he said what he said. He said, stop today. He said, quit talking to them today. He said, don't go back there again today. We can't do this back and forth. You're either going to allow him to lord over your life fully as he continues to, to remove the things that don't belong and to continue to give you the tools necessary. When you look at the life of David, there were some things that David did, some battles that David fought with a lion and a bear that I'm sure was terrifying in the background before we ever saw him beat Goliath. He didn't just show up to beat Goliath in these streets, but he stayed in position. He did what he was called to do. He allowed God to sanctify him. He was told that he was the king and then had to serve in the place that he knew that he would rule one day, but he did so with a humble heart. And it was in that, that God really started to change things about David. David, um, grew, um, 
spiritually. David grew in relationship, right? And in the same sense, when we are going through our own sanctification process, it's the same thing. There are some things that God needs to do with us out in the field before we can show up to the big test. But that doesn't happen, one, if we don't get past the place of sanctification. And two, if we don't allow our, or salvation, I'm excuse me. So if we don't ever get past salvation, like, okay, I gave my life to God and now I'm back out here in these streets. No, then you didn't give your life to God. You just walked up to the stage and cried a little bit, but you, you really didn't give your life over to God. Then you have to get to the point where sanctification becomes something that happens every day, right? Because we're not called to be perfect. We're not going to be perfect. Right. This is how God dealt with me with perfectionism. If you're so perfect, what you need me for? And I said, oh, wow, you can't be so perfect that you don't need God. However, there are some things that God shouldn't after a while have to say to you. Your response shouldn't be to be cussing people out immediately. It should be. Let me pray for you. Right. So as you continue to spend more time in relationship with God, in relationship with God, not practicing a religion, but in relationship with God. Right. Just like anybody else. I have friends of mine. My friend Jen. Shout out to Jenny because I know she always listening, child. Um, She does this thing where when she's had enough, she looks girl. All right. And if we do not say that all the time in our house, we'd be like, all right. Even my husband be like, all right, right. That's our thing. And we know that we got that from Jen because we spend so much time in relationship together that now some of her mannerisms and her sayings have rubbed off, rubbed off on us. Right. And I'm sure that y'all can relate to that in the same sense as you grow in relationship with Christ through this, this um, salvation or sanctification. I'm sorry, through the sanctification process. The same thing, you should start to look, start to look more and more like Christ. And this is where we, where we kind of get messed up because you give your life to God and be like, okay, God, I'm ready to go out to the masses. And God's like, no, 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 no. We got some things that we need to work on, some areas that we need to heal. I need to mend some broken places. I need to change some mindsets. I need to change how you deal with your money. I need to make sure that once you go to the place and I send you as a representative of me, that you're going to do right by what, um, by what I've given you. Even when you look at David, David was a man after God's own heart. He still sinned. Okay. He saw Bathsheba child and it was, oh wow. It was ratchet city. Okay. He had her husband killed, got her pregnant. It was a lot, (laughs) but even, um, even in that, when he was confronted by the prophet, he repented, he repented. He was not like Saul. If you notice and you read about Saul's um, Saul's leadership or his reign as king, when he was confronted, he did not repent, child. He went all them years and never repented and started having torments and spirits and then was coming after and trying to kill David. It was a whole thing because he was still stuck in his pride. But when David messed up, a man after God's own heart, and he messed up big. We're talking murder. That's first 48, okay? He messed up big. He had this man murdered, took his wife, slept with her, got her pregnant, put him on the front lines. No sword. Let's do that. But when he went back to God, there were still consequences to his action that he had to deal with. But God gave him grace. God gave him, continued to give him favor. And David is still a man after God's own heart because he repented. But there's a level of progress that has to be seen. There's a level of repentance that has to happen daily. There's a level of conviction that you have to have, that you have. It hits different. When you do something you know you ain't got no business doing, Holy Spirit will be like, girl, you know better. Girl, you know you shouldn't be doing that. And now I got to go apologize because I done fussed at my husband. And Holy Spirit said, is that how you talk to the gift that I gave you? And I go, oh, now I got to go say sorry. <laughs> now I got to go apologize. Whereas before I would have been like, he mad, he can be mad, it's whatever. But as you grow in sanctification, those things really start to hit your heart. And you can't move like that. I, I want to, I, I, man, I'm telling you. I wish I could quantify and put in numbers just the change, the percentage of a change of a person. But when you um, when you hear me speak, when you talk to me, if you knew BC before Christ, Charlotte, child, what? (laughs) 
<laughs> what? And I, I've always loved people, but it's a different kind of love that I'm able to display now. It's it, I can love people who are hard to love. I can do things that God has called me to do for people who have done me wrong. I can do things for people because it's it's to the servanthood of God. And that's our, our next point is you go from sanctification, from salvation to sanctification to servanthood. Hey, sis, are you enjoying this week's show? I pray that you are. Make sure that you connect with us and you keep the conversation going. Follow us over on Instagram at God Goals and Girl Talk. Make sure that you subscribe to the show, you rate the podcast, and you leave us a review. And don't forget to share the show with your friends, your coworkers, your mom and them, all the people. Okay? Okay. Now let's get back to the show. So let's talk about servanthood. A servant is a person who is devoted or guided by something. Another definition for a servant is a person who serves as a person subject to the direct control of an individual. I am under the direct control of the Holy Spirit. Whatever God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit tell Charlotte to do, we're doing it. Whether it makes sense to me or not, I know I can't go wrong because you're telling me to do it. Right. And a lot of times we don't really want to um, always do the things that God tells us to do. But because we are a servant and we understand what what's attached to our obedience, because we've gone through the sanctification process. So we know that our goal is to save souls, period. That's your purpose. OK, if you need to go back to listen and listen to Mission Mindset, um, this class that I teach about your purpose that is your purpose is to make disciples. Matthew 28, 19 says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, period. That's your purpose. It's not lost. But we can't get to that point, child, if you can't get sanctified enough to where you're not cussing the same people out that God has called you to, to disciple, to serve. The greatest among us is a servant. Jesus served. He washed Judas's feet and knew good and well that Judas was going to betray him. He's a servant first. And too many times we want to go out and we want to get platforms and we want God to give us the money and the fame and the this and the that, which fame, gross. I want to be wealthy and I want no. I want to still be able to go to Target and you not know who I am. That's how I want to live my life. Not sure how that's going to happen, (laughs) Um, but that's how I want to live my life. However, if God says, no, I'm going to put you on front street. I need your life to be a display X, Y, and Z. Guess what? It's his life. And I'm here to serve whether I want to or not. That's what servanthood looks like. Servanthood looks like doing what you don't feel like doing. Because God has called you to do it and not to a place where you get burnt out because God is going to grace you for the assignments that he's given you. So it's important that you're in conversation in relationship with him and you're not out here making yourself a God, little G, but you're out here acting when God tells you to act, doing and serving when God tells you to in position so that someone else can be blessed and come into the knowledge of Christ because of your servanthood. So if you feel like your relationship with God is at a standstill, look at these three things. Have you fully given your life to Christ or do you need to go back and rededicate your life? There's a level of salvation that has to happen. To, um, it, it's, a, it's a surrender to Christ. Then have you allowed God to start to sanctify and purify you, to set you apart so that he may utilize you? Right. Have you allowed him to start changing the way that you talk, changing the music and the things that you listen to, changing the things that come into your space? And then are you in relationship with him while you do that, that you're not doing these things um, ritualistically, that you're not doing this because of a religion or for clout, but you are truly allowing God to transform who you are from the inside out so that you then may be able to go out and serve and sanctification and servanthood happen simultaneously a lot of times. Times that God will sanctify you in an area where he's called you to serve. Kids get on your nerves, but God say, go serve in children's church. And as you're there, he starts to teach you lessons and he starts to grow you, right? A lot of times what we fail to understand is that this is all OJT, 
on the job training. God will not, this isn't, um, you know, where you, you go to school first and then you can do X, Y, and Z. No, a lot of these things are hands-on lessons. If you pray for patience, honey, that coworker that gets on your last nerve on the left-hand side is going to be your new cubicle mate. And you're going to have to learn how to extend grace, love, and mercy to them. And that's how God's going to grow you in patience. He don't just be like, girl, let me sprinkle a little bit of patience in your food for you. No. And so a lot of times the servanthood and sanctification process happens together. But you have to really have a heart that's surrendered. You have to truly um, make sure that you are uh, solidified in your salvation by admitting, believing, confessing, and doing the work that's attached to walking this life out with Christ. That is literally why this podcast exists, just to be um, a guide on this journey. But we cannot sit here and say, okay, well, I went up to uh, to the altar, gave my life to Christ, and I'm still broke. Or my bill still ain't paid. When it's like, no, but your but your nails are still done, baby girl. Make it make sense. You still you still getting flown out to, and and getting flewed out. You all expenses paid. Your hair is still you know immaculately done. And you're looking at God. Well, I went up to the altar. You're supposed to pay my bill. No, you have the resources, but because you have not truly submitted yourself to God. And gone through the sanctification process to learn how to be a good steward over your money. So then you can also go out and maybe even teach somebody else, help them budget, right? That may be your ministry. That may be where God has called you to serve. But you have not fully submitted yourself. And just because you went to the altar, that was cute, child. But if you ain't really mean it and you're not doing the work, here we are. And you want to blame God. But we're not fully committed. So if you are feeling like you are stuck in your relationship with God, if you're feeling you're, like you're not seeing the the results, it's it's us. It be useless. It's not God because He is holy and sovereign, and He He is the reason and the occasion, honey. It's it's us. There is something that you have not done. A lot of times when God is quiet, it's because He's already said what He said, and He's waiting on you to be obedient to the last instruction that was given to you. So it's so important that you go through salvation, sanctification, and servanthood to make sure that you are truly growing in your life with Christ, that you are truly allowing him to stretch you be, um, to the capacity that he's given to you, right? When we look at the, the story of the talent that God gave somebody five, two, and one in accordance to what they could handle. And it may feel like you can't handle it, but God made you so he knows what you can handle. So it is so important that we allow ourselves to continue to be stre- to be stretched by God. Um, it, this is how we build endurance. OK, this is this is how we fight the good fight. This is how we hear. Well done, my good and faithful servant at the end of the day. So, again, salvation, sanctification and servanthood. These are the areas that we need to be focused on um, and growing deeper in our relationship with God. Instead of us always asking God for what we uh, for what we need, because he knows what we need before we even ask. God, how can I serve you today? God, how can I look like you today? God, what is bothering you today? What's plaguing your spirit today, God? And how can I move in that direction? How can I pray for the people um, in Afghanistan, Lord? How can I pray for the people who are on my own streets that are hungry, God? What can I do? How can I be of service to you to glorify your name? That is how you move in your relationship with God. And so I think it's just really critical. I know this was a very simple message, but I feel like if it was so simple, everybody would be doing it. And so, again, I'm being obedient and giving out this public service announcement that these are the things that have to happen. Salvation, sanctification and servanthood. There is no relationship without the three. There is no relationship. We just doing stuff. And so we want to make sure that we're being strategic in the time that God has given us because time is a resource. We want to make sure that we are um, doing what God has called us to do and not making ourselves God and trying to make ourselves look good. Everything that we do should be to the glory of God.
And so that is it for today's episode. I pray that this really hit home for you guys. If you are wanting to learn more about stretching um, or study with us, we have Bible study every Tuesday in the Producer Society. You can go to www.godgoesandgirltalk.com or www.theproducehersociety.com or click the link in the show notes to start your two-week trial. It's amazing. We have a great group of women. It's it That is them, my sisters, y'all. I love it. Um, So I would love for you guys to be a part, but make sure that you are really allowing God to stretch you in every area, even when it doesn't feel good. We know that it may not feel good, but all things work out for our good. Amen. So until next week, I love y'all. Take care. Bye. I pray you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Make sure you stay connected with us throughout the week by following us over on Instagram at God Goals and Girl Talk, hitting us up on Twitter at GGGT Podcast, and checking out our website, www.godgoalsandgirltalk.com. The website is lit. It has a free resource library, and you can search podcast episodes based on topics, all the things, okay? So until next week, continue to love God, love people, and love yourselves. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.